so this keeps going on. Test. So we can come out on this grass here, we can go on the grass there, as well as the street, so. So we can stand on these lawns. <laughs> Nobody want to get close to y'all or something? We've got cuties. <laughs> I'm scared of your cuties, Betty. Standing right here. Yeah. We used to line up along here. Flash and candy wanted to come. You're socially distancing. <laughs> uh, Lori, would you like to sit? No, I'm no, fine. You okay? I'm okay. You've been through so Okay, good morning. I'm tough. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never got to go to Florida, right? <laughs> I went down in January for a funeral and came right back. <laughs> Boy, that's a shame. Well, that's like we were going to Hawaii and everything, and we paid for everything and never got a cent back. Oh my God. See if that's Everybody working. Blew up. Okay, we're going to start um, with He is Lord, and it's just that chorus, so we'll do it a couple times. Two times he is Lord, and then you are Lord. The words are in your boat. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Shout! 
I know a lot of people are morning people. Uh, I'm not a morning people. <laughs> not a morning per person either. Um, so I used to tease people because, you know, the Bible's important and it's true. And so if you look at the scripture, when God created the heavens and the earth, and it says it was good, and then he goes through and he creates man and then all the animals. And after every one of those, the Bible says, and the evening and the morning were the day. So the original creation is that the day started in the evening. <laughs> so I'm on original time. <laughs> you guys that like to get up at four, <laughs> you're under the fall. <laughs> That's not good hermeneutics, but it's a good joke. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to try this. Christ the Lord is risen today and put a little zip in our singing. Here it comes. We're just doing two verses. Maybe a little too fast. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, It's freezing. Today we're going to look at a passage out of 1 Corinthians 15, and it's really just verse 20, and it's really just one concept. Um, title is, uh, the message is, there's more to come. There's more to come. This week my attention was drawn to the verse in 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, that says, but now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. And I want to pick up on that word first fruits because it's a concept word. I mean, what it really meant was they had an offering that happened at Passover. And all the people would bring their first fruits, which was the best of their harvest that was ready at that point. But that was 40 days before, or 50 days before actually, harvest. And so they brought this grain and it went to the altar along with the lamb's blood and, and the other elements that were offered. And it was a promise that there's more to come. That this is the first fruits and there's gonna be more fruits. And that's the concept we wanna think about. Because if you look at the whole scale of Christianity, and that's what we're gonna look at in 
10 minutes, if we can do that. <laughs> um, that Jesus was the first. He was the first born from the dead. He's the first person to live a perfect life. He was the first and the only person that was God become flesh. And so when Jesus went and sacrificed his life and then went into the altar in heaven, throne room, to uh, offer his sacrifice, he was the first fruits from the dead. So we want to think about that. He's been raised from the dead and the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep or died. They didn't know what happened to people. In fact, in Old Testament, um, a lot of times English translates it hell, but the word was sheol, and the word sheol meant shadowy unknown. And so they didn't know what death was. They knew the person left here, but they didn't know where they went, what the situation was, were they alive, were they asleep, what happened. And so that's kind of what that deals with, about calling them falling asleep. Jesus has been raised from the dead, the first person raised from the dead. And the thing that was different about Lazarus, because Lazarus was raised from the dead, and there was a little boy that was raised from the dead. But what was different was Lazarus got his old body back, and the little boy got his old body back. And it was just like they never died. But Jesus, when he resurrected from the dead, he got his new body, he got the glorified body. And we know that because the disciples were locked away and what did Jesus do? Pops, he's in the room. He could be touched, he could eat, and he could pop out of a locked room. So his body was different. It was supernatural in that sense. It was real, but it was a different, it's the heavenly body, so to speak which we're all longing for heavenly bodies, I know, if you've been dieting. <laughs> so Jesus came announcing, let's just look at, the, at this first fruits concept. Jesus came announcing the arrival of the long promised, long awaited kingdom of God. And he came and he healed people and he did miracles and he taught the Sermon on the Mount who was citizen of a kingdom is like. And he taught all these things and did all these things. And then he died and he died a grueling death on the cross. And so when he dies, everybody's hope and joy and future died with him. And so they're all depressed. And when Jesus rose from the dead and Mary goes to the garden and finds him there, she thought he was the gardener because she didn't think there was you know, he's dead, I saw him die. And when he called her by name, then she realized he's alive. And what did Jesus say? Tell the disciples to go to Galilee and there they'll see me. There's more to come. And that's the message of Easter. There's more to come. You could stand at death, you can stand at a grave, and the message is, it's not over. There's more to come. There's more to come. That was just the first fruits. Jesus told the disciples to meet him in Galilee, and so they do. And when they go to Galilee, um, he appears behind closed doors. He eats fish with them. He uh, teaches them for 50 days. So he's in and out of their group for 50 days, appearing to over 500 people at one time. And then they go out to the mountain at Bethany. And he tells them, go into all the world and make disciples and teach them everything I taught you and teach them about the resurrection. And as he was teaching them, he ascended into this cloud. He ascended and went into heaven. And he said, there's more to come. There's more to come. Because he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. 
And so they go back to Jerusalem and they're praying and they spend some time there praying and praying. There's about 120 of them now gathering in the upper room. And 50 days later after Jesus ascended, there comes a rushing of a mighty wind and the wind comes and there's flames of fire and this Holy Spirit comes. And Jesus had said, I'm not gonna leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And so he came and he empowered them. And they went running out into the streets, telling them all the things that God has done because there's more to come. And that was 2000 some years ago. The church grew, 5,000 people were baptized in one day, added to the church. That was a long day, <laughs> 5,000 people. There's more to come. There's more to come. And so now we've been at this for 2,000 years. And they said it wouldn't last. And they said, Christianity's nothing and Jesus is nothing. But lo and behold, there's more to come. There's more to come. As of 2020, there are 2 billion, 382 million Christians in the world. There was more to come. But you know, that's only 31% of the world's population. So we need to go tell the word because there's more to come. There's more harvest that needs to happen. There's more people that need to know Jesus. There's no, more miracles we need to see. There's more lives transformed we need to experience. And so anytime you're facing a really hopeless situation like Gonzaga was last night. <laughs> this is my team. And you want to give up and go to bed, <laughs> which I did. I know I didn't go to bed, but I wanted to. Um, there's more to come. When you're standing at the bed of a loved one and you're grieving that you're going to lose them, there's gonna be a reunion. There's more to come. <coughs> when you've lost your dreams and you think it's all over, there's more to come. So that's the message of Easter. There's more to come, let's pray. Father, help us to understand that the resurrection is not something that just happened 2000 years ago. It's something that happens every day in our lives, that there's a, a new burst of life. There's new possibilities. You're working in our lives and you're working in our families and you're working in our church. And there's always more to come. And one day, Jesus, you're gonna come in all your glory and the graves are gonna open and everybody that's a believer is gonna be changed on the way up and get their glorified bodies. And we're all gonna be singing there's more to come because when we get to heaven, eye has not seen nor hear, ear heard the things that you've prepared for us. There's more to come. In Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna sing a song. Um, it's kind of a special, but it's not really a special. It's Lord of the Dance, and it's one of my favorite Chris, uh, Christmas Easter service songs. So I hope you'll uh, join with me if I can find a guitar pick. I had four, I got one. There's more to come. <laughs> If you, if you know the chorus, if you don't, it's in your book program. Um, go ahead and sing the chorus with us. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and 
I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in a dance that he. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance, dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. Yes, I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped me and stripped me and hung me high. They left me there on a cross to die. Wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, as I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up on high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the dance of the Lord, the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. Yes, I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Join us. That's what Easter's about. Dance, dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. Happy Easter. He is risen. <laughs> He's risen indeed. Indeed. Right, we have some goodies for you as you leave. To give you a little energy to get home. Your you sound just went off. <laughs> uh, turn to somebody. You don't have to go up to him, but turn to someone and say, He is risen. And let yeah. them say, He's risen indeed back to you. Thank you for joining us. 10 o'clock, we have another service over to the Oh, really? Okay.